Hello and welcome to the introduction to the Ultra Ray 3000 with some basic user guide essentials. Uh, this unit is from Ray Systems. We can see uh, this is very similar to the Mini Ray 3000 series, uh, however, has the additional tube um, area for um, removal of the tube. Um, again, the sounder is based on the left hand side of the instrument and the exhaust port on the right hand side of the instrument. There is a removable battery pack um, on the front and rear of the instrument. You can get alkaline AA battery options as well. It simply clicks back into position. So as we can see here, I've got my probe um, around at an angle just to make it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. It is important to always operate with the hydrophobic filter. Um, Ray also do a line of humidity filtering tubes which may be appropriate in higher humidity environments. So operationally speaking we start the instrument up using the on off button and then the instrument will go through a stand up start up procedure, it will do a few tests on the unit itself and then go for our lamp option. The instruments are supplied with a uh, pack of gas detection tubes. Um, these are separation tubes so the logic being that they will only let through um, gases, uh, benzene only. So to begin with, the instrument will uh, has a zero on startup enabled. So I'm going to do a startup zero on the instrument. So this is a 30 second basic fresh air calibration of the instrument. So there's a carbon filter supplied by Ray Systems that we can use on the top of the instrument if there's any potential for VOCs in the atmosphere. At the moment we're in search mode. So I will just change operationally how this works. So this is great for looking at things like if you want to identify a VOC atmosphere, averages, peaks. Again we've got calibration references, measurement gases, enter PC communication. So this is how we would communicate with the PC via either the travel charger or the desktop charger um, or if we wanted to interface with the auto ray cradle. Cross again, enter auto ray and stop measurement um, and then we're back to where we started. So to get into the back menus, it simply hold the mode and no button simultaneously. So we hold those two buttons together. Um, if you are asked for a password at this point, if it is a password protected instrument, the standard password is 0000. zero, zero, zero. Um, in this case, I haven't, don't have a password enabled. So the options in, firstly in the calibration menu, if we can start up calibration, we can do a zero calibration, which means uh, we can get a baseline zero value, so again using the carbon filter. Um, in this case, because I did a zero at startup, I'm not going to go through the calibration, uh, the zero calibration function. We can then get a span calibration. Now we can calibrate at either isobutylene for general VOC measurement, or we could potentially calibrate with benzene at five parts per million. Now I happen to have um, a can of isobutylene with me, so I'll just remove the tubes. Uh, I haven't have a can of isobutylene with an on-demand regulator, so I'm going to use uh, isobutylene for my particular calibration function. So we don't want to change any of the values here, so we'll say no, and then it'll ask us to apply gas one. So removing the hydrophobic filter from the top of the instrument, and then because I'm using an on-demand regulator, the instrument will automatically apply gas as soon as I've uh, enabled it. So we'll put the gas on the end of the instrument, and it will immediately start a gas flow. The instrument recognizes it's seen gas and is now doing the 30 second countdown on the calibration factor. Uh, you could use a manual flow regulator as well as a different option. So at the end of this, we should get a positive calibration reading for isobutylene. Uh, I would suggest if you are doing benzene measurements, you should use a can of benzene gas rather than isobutylene. Um, and equally, any calibrations that function with the benzene should be done using a ray separation tube. So span one calibration is done. You can see at the moment it's reading pretty high, um, but we also get the option to bump test this particular device. This is particularly important on um, gases like benzene. Our measurement options include our measurement gas, be it benzene, isobutylene or other. Um, we can select from a list from the last 10 use or from the gas library. Again, this has all the standard correction factors applied as you would find with any VOC monitor. The thing to bear in mind with this instrument is it functions with a 9.8 electron volt lamp. 
uh, not the standard 10.6 electron volt lab. So there will be some gases that are unionizable with the ultra ray instrument that would be available in the mini ray instrument. Um, we can also look at our measurement units, be it parts per million or milligrams per cubic meter in this case, if we had a PPV ray. And then the tube selection options gives us options for benzene or butadiene measurement. We go back. Uh, we can also, in our alarm settings, change our high alarm, our low alarm, stels and TWA alarms. Our alarm mode, be it latch or uh, auto reset in a safe environment, and then whether we have a buzzer and light functionality. Um, in our data log settings, we can look at our clearing the data log, any particular intervals we want to look at, the data selection, so what do we want to store, minimum averages, etc. Uh, our data log type, be it automatic or manual, so automatic would be working from startup. Um, in our general monitor setups, we can see things like radio power, operation mode, etc. Now, these will be primarily for um, uh, calibrating uh, for use with the wireless mesh guard system. Uh, but we can see things like site ID, user ID, user modes, etc. And that's operationally the end of the instrument. Um, if we now skip back into measurement mode and we will change it from the monitor setup the monitor operation mode we are currently in search mode but if we move it back into hygiene mode we'll see that the instrument interfaces in a slightly different way so we'll now save that go back to normal measurement mode now this means the instrument is now running from startup so we can see we're establishing a TWA but if you want to do a benzene measurement we then push across. It is important to do a benzene sample if you want to do a benzene specific. So it says tube start sampling. So what we want to do is then remove one of the tubes from the box, uh, snap either end. So we snap the top and bottom end of the instruments using a um, tube snap tube breaker and you can see the flow of direction of the gas measurement. This then screws in and fits into the top section here and we can see the color change of VOCs over time. Now it is suggested in the manual that you change your tube every time you wish to do a measurement and replace it with a new tube. However, I would suggest that you um, keep using a tube until you get a positive sample. Um, when we want to do a tube measurement, press yes and then it will take a 150 seconds to do a benzene measurement at the end of the, this is dependent on the temperature of the instrument itself. At the end of this time, it will give me a live benzene reading. There is a two tube tip breaker built into every box of tubes. Um, so this helps to break the tips off and contains any sharps in the bottom. Uh, we spin the tube in there and that creates a film around there and then you can chop the tube, break the tube off. So now we're at the end of the benzene measurement, we should get a benzene reading at this point. And I can see I'm reading 0.0, .0 parts per million. Scroll across and we can then return to VOC mode. And then it resets the TWA stem and peak. Now to turn the instrument off, it's a simple five second countdown. And then that turns the instrument off. Um, to get into the tube, uh, the uh, lamp assembly at the top of the instrument, um, we unscrew this top section, um, which unscrews from the instrument. Now, a lamp clean is something I would recommend doing. You can remove the sensor block, it simply pulls out the instrument, and then you can see the lamp is exposed. It is important not to touch the lamp with your fingers, um, it will become contaminated over time, but you can use um, the lamp cleaning solution to just clean over the top of the instrument. The other thing to bear in mind is the lamp cleaning solution actually contains VOCs, um, so it is important to leave the lamp exposed and to dry off after you have done a lamp clean on it. And then we just reattach the tube assembly and we are ready to go again. Um, hopefully you found this a useful video, um, an introduction to the operation of the Ultra Ray 3000 and also how to do a calibration um, and lamp clean. Alternatively, you can go and visit our website at www.safetymonitors.co.uk or do give us a call on 0800 
01489 890 458 between 9 and 5 Monday to Friday or outside of normal working hours please do give us a call on 07951 854 824. We're here when you need us and we understand that the normal 9 to 5 day doesn't always apply. So please do feel free to give us a call. Thanks for visiting and we hope to see you again soon.